the two things that are the same about Brayden and Tommy. Mm -hmm. They're loyal and they want to sell drugs. <laughs> Breakfast. Bye, breakfast. Day one, day one. This episode is gonna be so hard to start. <laughs> it's gonna be like, oh, hey. Um, <laughs> it's so, so funny because every episode, like, I don't know if you've watched everyone since, but Not every, every time, single one, but I've watched a bunch. Yeah, every time someone will bring you up, like, obviously, like, we've talked and, like, we talk all the time. I'll be like, they'll be like, oh, yeah, Joe, like, just such a great guy. I'm like, oh. Or, or I'll be like, oh, yeah, Joe. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like something so small, and then we just move on. That shit is so it funny, was, man. It just, like, became a thing, but and I was like, no, I actually love Joe. It's hard now to, like— But it's—, it's, it's uh, um, you also answer really well about—you've uh, you, voiced it several times about the similarities that there are and ones that I didn't even give enough credit for, and you articulated it, I think, better than I ever could have about the similarities and the differences between— uh, Tommy and Brayden, right. and giving credit to the uh, background mm -hmm. uh, of both of you guys. And then also, the best thing that I said, that you broke it down simple. It's simple. The two things that are the same about Brayden and Tommy. Mm -hmm. They're loyal, and they want to sell drugs. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> and that's simple. Right. And, we, and we, 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 we've been doing this for nine years because of that. <laughs> right. that. That formula has right. made a nine-year you know, right. show and fact. universe. And, and to be even more specific, it's like they're, like you were, or, or Tommy, the character, was always so loyal to Ghost. Like, to Ghost, like, no matter what, even though you kind of went off and, which Brayden does as well, go, go off and they do their own things, he rode for Ghost. So that's what people see in the Tariq and Brayden relationship. They're like, oh, Brayden just rides for Tariq no matter what. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what, like, a lot of it is. But it's like, our upbringings are so different. Even Tariq's upbringing is so different than sure. Ghost. So it's such... It, they're such vastly different characters, but there is like, oh, the the comic relief. There's the yes. loyalty, and you so, got great timing. You're actually, you're. <laughs> I think that, but that's, but that's a different. There's there's a similarity and a slight difference between Tommy and Braden, and I think that's breaking down to the actors. Is that you're you're funny, but you're funny like. Gary Owen is funny. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, could, yeah. like, write a joke and tell a joke. Yeah. Me, I'm funny just because of the Tommy character, and I know I started that season one of the Tommy of development of the was it's just timing right it's there's never mm. like it's never really an affectation to be funny it's a different presentation right. of the funny yeah that it breaks breaks down the timing but we have kind of both inherited that part which is necessary because that's that reflects life right yeah, it is really interesting. I love I love Tom because the Tommy humor and Braden humor is so vastly different because mm -hmm. Braden's more of like a goof, which is very similar to who I am. And the Tommy He's so serious. Right. Like, that's, but when he like when he has those little comical like like parts, it's just like what the fuck? <laughs> like, it, it catches you so Right. Well, the, the the humor comes from the seriousness mm -hmm. of how you portray Tommy, where where like I I'm thinking uh, like back. you order, like you meet Braden, you automatically see like he's just a funny kid. Like right. you see, t you see Tommy, you think this is fucking crazy. Too <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, but there was like, like again, like what, like one of my favorite Braden jokes is probably on the Tommy esque uh, cusp when you're saying to your girl. Um, you know, when you're when she's like, babe, I thought we were supposed to meet at the restaurant. You're like, yeah, I always hate when couples break up in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? That's, that's, that's um, uh, uh, season one finale. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Season one finale. Yeah, yeah, because that's... So it's funny because that's the humor that you... That um, I like. Right, I enjoy, that you relate and to. And then that kind of... Play, yeah. Right, that, that that's so interesting because I'm thinking about the scene where um, specifically um, you, uh, you take the car and you run over the guy who disrespected you. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, you were serious, that whole entire scene. <laughs> but it's one of the funniest yeah, scenes funny. in the show. When it's like, <laughs> easy like, son, and you're yeah. just driving the car and you're just serious. I'm like, there's so much humor in the seriousness is what's what I love. Yeah, Heather so Zolke wrote that episode and she like, she really catered to the Tommy character. And it doesn't always, like, I don't always agree with the humor. Right. But it's kind of like, I don't have a choice. And you just, so you, you try to make it the best you can. Like, like when Tariq calls the Uber for Tommy. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, we never, we never, we should have said something like, at least I would have loved, I'm like, you should maybe, maybe we could shoot Tariq like laughing. Right. Because 
who the kids guys? How much money from where? And he's and he's not calling Uber Black like the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's calling right. he's calling like an, like the Little friends Uber of you know, yeah, pre COVID Uber Pool for <laughs> Uncle Tommy. Like, Doing a bad like yeah, That's which is fact. you know it's funny. I think the actual concept of that is funnier than we uh, gave it credit for, rather than a joke in there. Yeah, w- was there anything on the original pod? I love how we just we didn't even like introduce. We just kind of went right into it. <laughs> um, after this question, we'll we'll because we'll, I listen. Listen, you guys know who's here. Like, <laughs> he to too much, we dude. got to go in here. You got an uncle, Uncle Tommy. We got the I call legend him Uncle here. Joe. Mm. Y'all call him Uncle Tommy. But this is my uncle. Like throughout the years, this really became my uncle. This is Uncle Joe to me. So we got the great Joseph Sikora in the building. We got Thank Joseph Sikora here. Everyone's been waiting for this episode. I've been waiting for this episode. They've been going crazy for this episode. Yeah. It, this Insane. is this is gonna be the it's gonna be the biggest episode. But um it's funny because all the past episodes I've just like made little jokes like, oh yeah, like because obviously everyone has they've seen social media and I went, Oh yeah, Joe, who? Who? <laughs> but listen, I've been so excited to have him come on because I just like I really do love him and I'm so excited for just this conversation and you guys just get the behind the scenes stuff. So this is what everyone's been waiting for. Um, well, this podcast is fire and it's an honor and a luxury to be with both of you guys who are tremendous actors. I'm honored to be in the same universe as the both of you and to watch you grow up into, <laughs> you know, the leader Crazy. of this show, um, carrying this show and... It's just, it's total pride, man. I appreciate it. You keep on keeping b- doing big things, Mike. Couldn't do this without, you know, learning from the OGs, you know, <laughs> I was working with, you know, look, picking up stuff from you guys. Very generous, set. very generous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had to, you know, had to pick it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to the OGs. They, they made this all possible. Oh, 100%. Man. OG, don't yeah. say it too many times. I'll have to cover up my old neck. <laughs> <laughs> was there any, um, ever, maybe not jokes, but scenes specifically in power where, you saw and you're like, oh, I don't agree with this. And then it came out and you're like, oh, actually it came out better than I thought or joke. Like, Well, you know, it's it's sometimes you have, I think I think we've all gone through that, your frustrations of like, how is this going to turn out? Right. or And, and it, you know, wanting to, it's all done out of a place of love and, re- right. and respect for what we're doing. Right. But I think uh, Shanna Stein said it wonderfully once uh, to me that was just like, just remember, like, you have a whole crew of people who want this to be great. Right. So everybody is striving for the greatness. And primarily, it wasn't for me to agree or disagree, um, you know, with uh, uh, Courtney creating the show, who's, you know, she's tremendous right. and a brilliant storyteller and an incredible writer. And then for really when they brought in Gary Lennon in the second season, he's really the... Um, Creative voice behind the Tommy character in do, terms do, do of Do you mean, um, sorry to cut you off, second season of Power or second season of, of uh, Force? Second season of the Power show. Okay. Gary came in um, as a co-executive producer, and Gary ended up being the co-showrunner of the yes, Power second show season, at, right. at, the, at the end of the um, of the series. Uh, you know, obviously, he's running uh, Power Book 4, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm grateful to love have him cool. back because Gary. Gary's, Gary's just incredible. So much of Tommy came through the uh, filter of Gary and then through me, but... To go back to the development of Tommy, and I've told this story before, it was it's funny uh, um, for many reasons, but when everybody was so excited that I, you know, oh, you got this show, this new thing, except my buddy David Schwimmer. <laughs> and David Schwimmer, he was excited, but he goes... He goes, friends. He's, you know, yeah. Schwimmer from Friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, he played um, uh, Ross on Friends, but, you know, obviously he's known for his, for his comedy, but I said to him, I said, you know, it's a great character, but there's... It's not a whole lot of humor in this guy. I mean, he, you know, they're so serious in all these situations. It's Tommy in the, in the uh, first scene, uh, episode anyways. So I really tried to find those places for humor. Like when Holly comes into Tommy's apartment, I was like, can we put a gun on the table? They're like, yeah, okay. And then so in that, instead of just like, you know, there's a gun on the table, it's like, <laughs> right. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Try to do that. So try to create the humor in the character and then it kind of... Uh, made for a fuller character, and then they started writing towards that, right. which was great. They That's where they did great with, with my character, which is kind of why he went on that path of who kind of I am, yeah. is because they're so good at picking that stuff out of being like, oh, let's lean into this. That's so interesting. Like, there are so many scenes that, like, people wouldn't even know that you kind of went into set early. He's like, no, I want this kind of humor here, and it's not even written. Right, right, to try to help develop that. and that, So it is a collaborative process. Right. I mean, of course, there's... All, we all have our part to play. No, no man is an island, especially not in this arena. Right, yeah, that's a fact. It's right. like a football team. Yeah, all oh, that—that's so interesting. So, and it's also the writers don't, because as actors, 
no matter how you you frame it, we're protective of our characters because it's how we're portrayed. Sure. So sometimes if if there's something that you think, oh man, I gotta do this or <laughs> I gotta snitch or I gotta, it's like you're so protective of how you get portrayed that you sometimes lose focus of the story and you're like, oh no, 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 I know this is a, a group thing. I just gotta let it let it play out. So yeah. you know how I felt throughout season. One through four, bro, doing a bunch of shit. I'm looking at like, why do they got Tariq doing this shit, bro? I'm like, right. nah, this, this not right. Man. <laughs> what, what, what was the number one thing that you were like, damn, I don't want to do this? So listen, man, just getting down to the wire on this, man. It was almost, almost the end of the year. Well, we've been talking about this it's since March. Season, baby. Yeah, since March. Since March. Listen, man, it's down to the wire. Now, look, we're giving away money at the end of the year. But that all depends on how many... Well, it doesn't depend. We're giving the money away regardless. regardless. But the amount of money that we're giving away depends on how many signups we get. And it's crunch time. The year is almost done. So I need y'all to speed up these signups because if y'all want to win some money, y'all got to sign up. Make sure you sign up at moneyline.com. Use the road tag. The crew has it, okay? Listen. We are giving away. Right now, it's at about $15,000. That could change your life, okay? $15,000 15 15 right now. $15,000 right now. I mean, what? We need what? 4,000, 5,000 more to make it 20K. 20K. 10,000 more to make it 25K. So it's up to you guys. If it's up you to y'all. How much y'all want to win? Y'all got to sign up. It's right. on y'all. It's not really up to us. Right. If you sign up, you're automatically put into the drawing to win some money. Now, what are you signing up for if you don't know what money line is? This is you better. You save money line. You want to invest money line. You want to spend some money? Money line. Right. Every time Anything, you money. You, anytime you money, you money line. Right. Come on now. Be smart about it. We just love Moneyline so much. We really believe in what they do. And, and I really look at this as a helpful service, especially right. like, you know, young people coming up our age, you know, even if, you know, people that have a lot of money coming in or even if you don't have a lot of money coming in, it helps you learn how to manage your stuff. You know, you got to learn how to manage your money at a young age because, you know, things happen and you got to you gotta be smart about your money. So I'm telling you, use Moneyline. It's going to give you some tips. It's going to help you. You're going to get rich. All right. Come on, baby. So make sure you go to moneylion.com, download the Moneyline app, and use the roar tag. The crew has it. Every yes. single sign up, a dollar in the jar. We're giving away 20 grand. Every single sign up. But don't forget to use the tag. Don't forget to use the roar tag. The crew has it. Because if you don't use it, your name won't be added into the drawing list for the money. So use the tag and sign up, baby. Listen, this is Moneyline. This is the only money app you'll ever need. Money it has Lion, literally baby. every tool that you can think of when it comes to money. Moneyline. All the you only need. app you'll ever need. Let's do it at the same time. Money, money line. line. The, the only, only money, money app you'll, you'll ever, ever need. need. I almost said only app you'll ever need, but there's Instagram and obviously like <laughs> WhatsApp when you're talking to someone sketchy. But back to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously killing ghosts. Right. Like just doing that scene was just fucking like that shit was just hard. Bro. You're like everyone's gonna. It was just weird, bro. It was just literally just weird, like a weird feeling. Um. But, like, something I looked at and, like, damn, like, why the hell did Tariq do this was when they was at the funeral and he let uh, Dre know that, they, that there was a Oh, yeah. That yeah. shit pissed me off, bro. I watched the episode and I'm like, nah, ain't no way you at the funeral and you thinking about saving this nigga's life, bro. Like, right. that, was a, that was a crazy <laughs> moment right there. I'm like, nah, I can't believe I'm doing it. It was, uh, honestly, it's a billion things that, I, that I'm like, nah, there's no way they got him doing this. But right. that definitely was like, nah, come on, bro. Like, Dre, like... Trey, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy, though. Um, all right, so kind of the way that we like to do this is we, is we go from the beginning. So, like, what was day one Joseph Sakura gets an email or a phone call of, you see the words power? Like, w like what is it? You know, it was just another audition. Right. Uh, and when it first came around, it, I was uh, not, I was, I was getting married. So um, I passed on the original audition for um, the which the character was called Eddie O'Neill at the time. <laughs> that, that was Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Eddie O'Neill. Eddie O'Neill. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Eddie. That's hilarious. Uncle Eddie. Yeah, Tommy. They they uh, they did about you know, Tommy Egan is of course how, how Tommy Egan is a else. fire ass Eddie O'Neill. But um, yeah, so it was, and then it came back around because I think that that was originally when the idea was possibly of uh, Fifty playing the role, um, mm. and I'm not exactly positive where they were in the process, but once it was Omari. Uh, who was going to be the role, it was uh, kind of this whole second round, which was, I believe, almost two months later than the, wow. the first the first round of auditions came through. And then, yeah, it was five auditions, um, a Ooh, total yeah. of five auditions to five. get the role. Yeah, I was the only actor out of New York. Wow. Originally. 
Wow. Everybody else was Los Angeles based. Mm. Right. And, and you chemistry read with uh, with Omari and mm-hmm. was it a bunch of other ghosts as well or it was just Omari? Just Omari. What was Omari like, was the only one that was cast. Mm, fine. So what was like some of the first scenes that they had you read and you, they had the one with uh, Angela. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, and I'm uh, too. The, it was uh, the the uh, why you why you wanna why you wanna fuck with this girl who's like the, the Angela character? Why you wanna fuck with this girl? Like uh, she's gonna fuck everything up. Like she was she was trouble back then. She's trouble now. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck with this girl. Mm-hmm. Or it was like that that whole thing when Tommy and and Ghost are riding in the car. It's like don't do this on Tasha because Tommy's always had Ghost back, but he's also had Tasha's back right. in a lot of ways too. And the, one of the things, speaking of what was hard for us as characters, mm. to be like, Tommy let it go pretty quick that the ghost character uh, kind of was a rat to right. to setting up Canaan. Mm. Right. And like, mm. like he kind of, like we kind of brought, like, he was kind of like, kinda yo, yo, yo go, go, like, Canaan, I didn't know that he set you up and went to the police. And then they kind of didn't, never really referenced it again. And I was kind of like, it's eh, all right with me. Cause <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it, because it's tough, and maybe that is something that you uh, I think unintentionally would forget forget as a friend to be like I can't I don't want to dwell on that. So right. ultimately, it was a it was a it was a good move, but that was one of the what well, was one of the scenes, and then um, the other scene was right as we get done with uh, the meeting with Lobos, and what we ended up shooting it uh, right by um, uh, Lincoln Square by the P J Clark's whatever hotel that is right there, and uh, uh, I come up and I say watch your back. And he's uh, he says watch your watch your back, Tommy. I say you too, motherfucker. <laughs> and uh, and then there's the classic story of when O did it at the final um, reading. He was like, you know, kind of facing me and and uh, we're facing off, but he's in front of me. And there's the you know I'm trying to audition for these people, and I smacked his nuts. And he went down like you too, motherfucker. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> he went, he went down like that, and then I just walked out of the room, and I figured, man, I either got that or I did not get that. I was a strong choice. Yeah. Yeah. I like left it all in the room there. But, but it was great. It was great, and and you know, Omari was generous. Omari's a great actor to act with. I always say I had, you know, between action and cut, you know, it was so much every time. It was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Always zigging and zagging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's so unpredictable. Like you'll never know. Like you'll never know what O's gonna go for. It, like in each take, bro. Like yeah. you'll never know. You you're gonna know. It's gonna be something different every take, bro. Yeah, it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, try a lot of fun every take. Yeah. So so when you you get to set, <clears throat> um, you start filming the show. Day one, the first episode uh, that we first f- scene that we filmed was me, J.R. Ramirez Love as Julio and uh, Dominic Colon. Who played uh, Annabelle? Can you say it, Renee? How do you say the name? Annabelle. Which one? An- remember Annabelle the, from the Tainos? Oh, Anibal. Anibal. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, we, so that's those were the characters because I obviously don't pronounce it correctly. <laughs> and um, and we did that. We shot that in Woodside, Queens. And that was the that was day one, day, day one, one of filming. Yep, nice. that was nine yeah nine years ago. So so are you on set and you're like, are you day doing scenes? You're like, this is gonna be a fucking hit. Or did you not have that feeling until maybe like a couple seasons later? Like I'm curious how you felt Such when you. Such an interesting question. I just don't, in terms of hit, because I've been like you know we were talking earlier, Johnny, that like I've been doing this for so long. You've been on every that, show. That I was just like <laughs> I I I uh, I didn't think about nothing. I thought right. about showing up, knowing my lines, and making strong choices. Right. That's it. Like I was like whether it's a hit or not, that's not up to me. Right. Fifty Cent said it was going to be a hit, so I was like it's probably going to be a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fifty Cent must be yeah, true. It's gonna, you know. <laughs> right. Um, I trusted him, and I trusted. Fifty said it was going to go seven years, and you know it was six and a half seasons, seven about seven years. So it's like you know he kind of had a structure, and he stuck to it, and right. you know, and he he had that infrastructure and made sure that it happened. But uh, it was, I think, the season when when Michael's like, oh, you know, th- first four seasons, like, what is Tariq doing? Some mm-hmm. of this stuff, I never really questioned stuff until. I feel like it was further down the road, like past season four or five, six. Mm-hmm. And then if they had something, I'm just like, I don't know. It seems like we set something, something different up. Are right. you sure he, this is what would happen? That's Because I always tried to feel free and, and, and incorporative, even if I did, was like, what the hell is going on here exactly? Right. Um, just kind of being more uh, uh, trusting. And like you and I said as well, Gianni, that um, if I ever had a question, Courtney was able to answer it. So right. that speaks volumes. Right. Every time. Um, and, and was there any early on, like, um, because you get a script and it's, it's, I wouldn't say bare bones, but as you as the actor, like, you make the choices of what this guy's going to be. Like, if you put anyone else in the 
Tommy role, it would be vastly different than the way Joseph would do it, regardless if the lines are the same. So was there anything early on that you were like, okay, I want him to be like this. I want him to do this. Was there anything specific that you made? Obviously, you mentioned like the gun joke like a couple seasons later. Was there anything like day one or episode one where you're like, okay, I want to play it like this? Or you just kind of rode with how, how you felt? I just tried not to question my instincts. I think that you have to go back to the first two episodes, which were directed by Anthony Hemingway. Go. Um, yeah, just what a dynamic and dynamite human being. And the reality is, is that if Anthony Hemingway did not direct this, I wouldn't be sitting talking with you guys right now. And that's what the difference um, a great pilot director makes because really if he had me though. questioning my choices, I would have been like, oh, shit, am I wrong? I, I'm messing this up. I'm right. screwing this up. And he was like, no, that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, gr that's right. 100%. That's great. So it really kind of fortified and solidified the choices that I was making. And I'm so grateful to him for empowering me as an actor and giving me the confidence that this was right. This is the character I should have created. I also did a heck of a lot of work before we started that first day. Right. Because another thing that David Schwimmer told me was, I love it, and I think it's super wise, is that if you're not the same guy, the same fully actualized character on the first day of set in the first season, whether that show goes one season or ten, if you change at any point, the audience will turn on you, and they won't even know why. So you have to be that guy. Let the writers write the situations. You're responsible for the character. Right. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, I never really thought about it like that. <laughs> that was deep shit. I like that. That is a fact. <laughs> yeah, so 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 then um it happens and then you start like the script, the new scripts are coming in. And uh is there anything that you're you're like really vibing with and you're like, okay, this season's wrapping up. Um, I know this is where this character is headed. Was there anything, like a moment or a scene where you're like, this is it, like, I love doing this? Or was it not, did you not have that at all? Or were you like that from day one? I was, I mean, I, I show up pretty excited every right. single day. That's kind day. of the way that I am, yeah. Yeah, I figure. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the whole crowd, like, asking these questions, like, so tell me. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it really is great, and I, I feel like I never, I never lost that, and I, I, I I think that there were times, I think probably by the end and kind of before book four started and being, I always, always excited, but reminding myself to say my gratitude prayers and just how lucky I am that, um, yeah, I, I know I do a good job because I stuck with it and um, I tried to make big choices. I didn't always, they weren't always great, but a lot, sometimes they were because they were big, they were extreme. Right. Um, but uh, uh, just reminding myself to rem remember that I'm so lucky and I'm so grateful. And there are times where I'm sure you're in the same boat to both of you guys that I don't want to take this picture maybe, but I'm grateful for my job and this is part of the thing. Appreciate you know, it. listen, if I'm having a dinner with my wife, maybe you could wait till I'm done eating. Right, right, but like 100%. But 99 percent of the time, I'm just like, yeah, let's take that picture. Let's do that thing. Mm -hmm. So reminding myself of, of gratitude. And here we are with the second season with Gary Lennon um, running the show. And it was... Every bit as amazing as I thought it was going to be. And the the nice guys, the good guys can win too. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. No, I'm super excited for season I'm two. It's good. Excited. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I'm I can't wait. Excited. Season two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so funny because Chris, everyone who, who I've talked to since then has been like, yeah, season two is crazy. I'm ready so we're, for, we're, I'm we're ready super for excited shit. for that. I'm ready for um, that. So actually, it's, it's funny that you say that. So you, did you start on Broadway or did you start doing TV and film? What was first? I started in theater. Right. It took me many years and many, many to plays to get to Broadway. Right. And then my show only ran for like a month. And then we closed down because people weren't going to see it. It was a courtroom drama called uh, The Kane Mutiny Court Martial. But I was a lead in, in that. So to have that lead on Broadway was really difficult. And um, you know what? I'm just going to say this, man, because I think that, that we've been pretty up for, uh, for f forthright and honest. I got stage fright from that play. I had the director of that play was a very famous director, um, you know, multiple, multiple Tony winner. And during intermission came up to me and was just like, the fuck are you doing with your hands in your pockets? Who told you to do that? I was like, uh, this is intermission. And after intermission, by the way, I basically talk for like a 15 minute monologue. And this guy's berating me about why I made that decision. And the curtain's about to, and I was just like, what? Nobody told me to do that. I was just trying something, right. you know? And uh, he's just like, that's why the show got, you know, didn't get the good reviews that I wanted to get because of decisions like that, because you fucked it up. And I was like, 
God damn. Oh my So God. I went back, and this is honest. I'm going to just be honest here. I went back behind the flats that were on there, and uh, me and wonderful actor named Joe Kovanek was in it, um, who you guys definitely know and have seen. He's like one of the best actors in the world. And Tim Daly. And um, I went behind the flats, and I just literally didn't like cry. Like, <laughs> right. I just like this. And it was just like tears flowing down my face. And um, I, it was the first time in my life. I never felt like I could make a mistake on stage. Right. Once I was on stage, it was like, wow. It was like, you know, it was, there was something holy and magical about it. And uh, I never questioned the choices. I allowed the spirit to take me and do these things. It was the first time in my life, Gianni, swear, in my life, I could see people in the audience. And I was just like, I'm, I'm just faking. I'm just some dude pretending to be some dude. And right. it's like he almost put out my flame. So we all know that the best time to prepare for growth is before the opportunity arises, especially for online businesses. Listen, ShipStation sets you up for growth by directly integrating with every shopping cart and storefront on the internet. So your products are easier to find, easier to manage, and easier to get into your customers' hands. Come on, you know easy is the best. So one way Mike and I like to avoid the holiday stress is we like to prepare early. We have to make sure that all of our stuff is set up before the holiday shipping season gets wild. Bro, shipping season during the holiday, bro, is disgusting. It's get crazy. Disgusting. So that, right. Packages getting lost, all type of shit. Right. ShipStation got us covered, though. They got us covered. So when we're doing our Crew Has It merch, we make sure we use ShipStation. We make sure we get that out early. Because we want y'all to get y'all orders on time. Right. I, yeah. I know I know, y'all hate waiting for orders. You don't want to open a package on December 26th? Like, yeah, bro. Does? I hate waiting for packages. I'm, I'd be checking the tracking every day. I'm like, bro, how is this not here? Right. I'm outside the window. Delivered. I'm outside the window looking at the UPS code. Yeah, bro, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Ship station got you covered. You don't got to worry about all of that. Now, look, G, we don't got to limit our businesses just to one store. Oh, right. It links up with everything, right? Everything, bro. With Amazon. Amazon, Shopify. Etsy. Else? Etsy. Yep. Literally everything you could think of. Anything you can buy something online, Ship Station is integrated and they work with it. You can literally handle every single one of your products. Anything you got to ship, you can handle it with one dashboard interface. Oh, that makes it so station. much easier. Then you can have multiple different things being sold on different platforms. I'm telling you, and you, and it's all right there in your face. You don't got to go to this account. You don't got to go to this account. Yeah. You got to go to this account. Everything is on one simple dashboard. So the reason why I love ShipStation so much is because I know we got a lot of fans of the crew has it and, you know, the power universe that have their own merch. I get DMs all the time. You know, I'm merch, merch. How do I get you merch? This is the easiest way to ship out your merch if you have a business, if you have a hustle, anything. Go to ShipStation.com and use the promo code The Crew. Listen, we give in 60 days free as a trial. You know what I'm saying? So use that code. Come on. You try it out. Maybe you don't like it, which you won't, but maybe you don't like it. That's it, you know? But I'm telling you, if you try out ShipStation, you're going to love it. It it's makes no your life easier. Like it. It's no way you're not going to like it. I mean, it's making your life easier. It's making your business do better. It's making your customers happier. How could you not like ShipStation? ShipStation.com, use the promo code the crew, and get to work, baby. Why don't you make the best gift that you give this holiday season? In your pants. Do your little drummer boy a favor. He used the lawnmower 4.0. No, it's my little drummer boy. You got the big drummer boy. <laughs> Go on with the ad. You don't want to have no silent nights in bed, you know what I'm saying? You got to make sure down there is smooth. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to load up. <laughs> Manscaped night. So listen, I know Mike's usually helping me out and telling me, you know, what's going on with the products, but... We know what's good with Manscaped. Yeah, we already okay? know. This is this is our these are our partners right here. Like we locked in. Manscaped been with us since day one. We tried every one of their products with their new shower products. They'll make you feel like all oh, anybody wants for Christmas is you, big dog. Listen, man. So won't you deck the holes from your face to your balls? I mean, well, don't deck them, clean them, and I'm smoothing the holes out from your face to your balls. You know what I'm saying? It's holiday season. You can't be down there all rough for Christmas. Your lady trying to get some Christmas rumping on and you're over there looking all, all, all weird, you know what I'm saying? Use the Manscaped 4.0, load it up, uh, 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 clean it up, get to business, baby. Get that Christmas going, you know what I'm saying? So you guys know all about the Platinum Package, right? Mike, tell them about the Platinum Package. I mean, I feel like that's the best package for this holiday season. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to stay prepared the whole month. What do they got in there? They got the deodorant. Got the deodorant. They got the body wash. Yep. What else? What the lawnmower 4.0. The lawnmower 4.0. Get the boxers. Come with the boxers. I mean, bro, you got the whole setup. You can't lose with this shit. And you want to smell fresh from your Santa hat all the way down to your candy cane, baby. <laughs> Just make sure the candy cane is down there looking smooth. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's all. That's all I'm gonna advise you. Yeah. Do. We don't want no Grinch down there, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Remember that scene where he's got all the all the when he shaved his. Feet? <laughs> Anyways, make sure you go to manscapecom slash crew. Twenty percent off and free shipping. Come on, you can't beat that. 
Sorry, I tried to think of another Christmas joke. Back to the episode. And so it wasn't wow. until... That was 2006, and it wasn't until that I remember. We started Power in, what, 2013? Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until 2016, so three years into the Power show, that I felt like, oh, my God, it's back. Damn. It's back, man. I can do it again. Like, I can do it again without questioning my choices. And... um and then you, I had, you know, I was surrounded by this, you know, really wonderful team of actors and storytellers and, and people. And I felt, wow, I, 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 I got it back. Right. It came back. Crazy feeling. It, came, it, crazy was, feeling. it felt crazy. And then I was just like, I felt, I knew what Tommy was. I, I, I mean, I, I structured it because it made, it made me relearn the craft. Right. Because I was a little, <laughs> I mean, even though I wasn't successful like you guys were as young men, I was a working actor, right. so I, I was constantly sharpening that tool, constantly doing theater, right. constantly doing small guest stars, learning how to be my place in there. and Challenging yourself. Challenge, you know, right. and, but always kind of working it. So it wasn't until after I got that stage, and I did plays right afterwards. I did a play right after Broadway called um, Fat Pig by Neil right. DeBute. I actually did that in acting class. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I played Tom. Oh, yeah. And I did it in, uh, in, uh, in Los Angeles. Ashley Atkinson, who originated the role uh, of the girl in it, was back and we were together. I, I didn't leave the stage for... John Bernthal was in it with me, too. Oh, I love John oh, Bernthal. And um, uh, I didn't leave the stage for 90 minutes. It was one act, just the whole thing. And yes. I, don't, I don't remember that play because my stage fright was so high that I, and I, that I, I was, people would be like, I'm so nervous, I'm going to throw up. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Right. That doesn't really happen in real life. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, was, I, I have no recollection of that. I did a three and a half, almost four hour play with two intermissions called The Brothers Karamazov that we adapted for the stage. And I barely remember that. And like, just because my stage fright was so, so four thick and intense. Four hours is crazy. Yeah. yeah, so it was just, it was always just challenging myself continue. that television always felt like, this is so, so much of it, so different than that. But still, I still had the stage fright. Right. From doing the power, even doing the power show. I'd have to hype myself up, get to there. And then it just, it was that season three. Season three, it was just like. So that was a moment. No, yeah. You arrived. You yeah. arrived. Mm -hmm. You arrived. Yeah. That's fine. Damn, that's. So then, so you've always done like the guest stars and, you know, Broadway, this and that. Small real currents, yeah. R right. That was kind of what paid the bills up and up. Exactly and, that. Right. That you were just trying to pay the exactly bills to that. get to the next one. So, job. what was Tommy at, for season one? For me, I was just like, holy cow, I'm right. going to, you know, this and for eight episodes? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the. I don't, if it. Hey man, I can pay off my you know, bills. Right, yeah. right. As an actor, first like, time in my life. Right, when you're in that mindset of just being like, oh, I got to get to the next thing. You telling me I'm working for the next six months? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, yeah. Sign me um, up. Um, so then, when when did you kind of um feel the shift of of what the you know it eventually became? Obviously, all the shows. When did you feel the shift of oh, maybe I'm picking a, a roles a little more now, or or I have money, so I don't need to work until this. Like, when did that start happening? Because think, that's a shift in an actor's life. I think I think it was um I think it was last year. Being honest with you. really yeah, after the first season of um, book four, I felt yo. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I, it's a different kind of brand of that. Uh, for example, was I actually called 50. I got offered this role with a big director uh, and a cool play. But it was, it was similar enough to Tommy that when I was talking to the director and the producers and when it... Uh, I was like, yo, I got to get like something like this. I want a, I want a bald cap. I want like a little mustache. Right, I want this again. and that. I want to hide within the character. And the guy didn't, they just didn't get it. They're like, no, no, it's not. But it's not Tommy again. I'm like, yeah, but the fans are going to say that's Tommy Egan. Right. It's too close. I need this. this I need enough. Ooh. They just didn't get it. And I gave Fifth a call. And Fifth is like, yeah, no, nah, that's probably not the one. You know, and so Fifth, let me just give another shout out to the boss. Right. Uh, He's been wonderfully accessible. He's the best boss I've ever had. He's incredibly supportive. Um, he uh, he knew how much I was getting paid comparatively the first season, and so I was gifted uh, the gift of Rene Castillo to uh, <laughs> to uh, I'll help me, which we talked about him on a lot of episodes. Help me figure out to how to, different ways to make money, you know. Right. And um, uh, part of the uh, becoming um, uh, starting the the uh, our, our company, starting Black Fox. Yeah. 
was out of a conversation with 50 when he was just like, you got to make your own stuff, got to make right. your own content. He's like, I'll help you. Right. When it's time to help, I'll help. Yeah. And, and, he, and he has. Yeah. I'll, I'll we have a project together right now. I'll piggyback Fly. on on, uh, on that. I saw him in Prague, which I went to Prague with, um, if, for people who follow me on Instagram, uh, with Joseph's brother. Um, and we had the time of our lives. We saw 50 two nights in a row. And you go in 50's dressing room and he's literally like, like, looking at his set list and you walk in, he's like, no, fuck it. Like, and he just will talk to you for an hour. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't realize who he is. He's just the sweetest guy in the world. And me and Alvin are just sitting there having the time of our lives. And I remember, it was weird because I remember looking at 50 and then looking at your brother and I was just like, nah, like, this is crazy. <laughs> and it, it was just, I was in a different world. Um, so that's who you have the company with, Black Fox. It's your brother, Alvin. Mm -hmm. And he is one of the greatest people ever. I, I wanted to shout him out because I, I really do love him. He's such a sweet guy. Um, so yeah, he, he's kind of, Talk, talk to me about a lot of the content you guys are doing, and I'm really excited to see. Yeah, I was, I was, I'm like, where are you at? I'm like, he's like, I'm at the house. <laughs> Johnny, I'm at the house. <laughs> yeah, Alvin comes and chills in the house. He's like, oh, I'm chilling with you right now. Yeah. Fire. Fire. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. Um, Incredibly intelligent, too, and something that I have to do when we're talking with other people in the industry because, you know, there is such a presentation here um, that people kind of like, I'm this, I'm this, and then you they, they kind of, it's self-described people in the industry oftentimes to pump themselves up. Well, Albin, sometimes I actually have to pump him up because when we're talking to other production companies mm -hmm. or talking to networks or getting to know other writers and people, I have to remind him like, oh yeah, this is my, you know, my brother Albin who speaks Bulgarian fluently and reads and writes Bulgarian and Russian Cyrillic and speaks Russian. And, you know, I'm sure that was helpful when he was over there. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and also, you know, graduated uh, from the um, uh, University University of San Francisco, uh, you know, uh, uh, magnum cum laude, and right. uh, from, uh, has a degree from uh, Oxford University yeah. in philosophy from the College of the Black Friars, yeah. and has his master's in foreign economic studies from Corbell Institute. Yeah. And ha you I, was know. Like, I was like, Alvin, can, can, can you talk to that girl for me? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, bring her over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just like go up and talk. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it, perfect, <laughs> perfect. Damn. So he's just an impressive guy, but he also at the same time he that's, used to run a magazine out of New York City called Young Philosopher, mm -hmm. which is in the studs. Turkle style, common man interviews with big philosophical right. uh, themes. And then um, he did that. He, he's made his own short films, produced and directed them. Uh, he's worked in the industry. He was uh, worked at ICM for a while. So it's like he's a man of many hats. And right. so uh, he's it's tough to be to be a brother of someone like that because they think it's a handout or this and that. And they don't know what actually. They oh, I could never do it without him. Right. Im impossible. And as you know firsthand that I, I have um I'm not as accessible as Alb, and I do. I am a little bit more, like a bit, bit, bit more reserved, and that's just because I think that I played, you know. Albin played around in the streets too, but I did, I did a significant amount of playing around in the streets. And so there's a lack of trust right. in people. And then if you feel like you've been crossed in some way, then that's it. And Albin's like, no, man, you can't, that's not the way to be. It's like, you gotta, you gotta keep breathing. You gotta keep breathing. And another thing that I like, would love to give Gary Lennon credit for, a wonderful quote is, to not judge somebody by their worst mistake. Right. To, so you judge it on, you know, compile these things. You know, somebody does want, oh, no, you did that. I mean, it have to be pretty, it happens, come on. Right. But it have to be pretty bad. Right. So, you know, take a breath and, and you know, keep on keeping on. So he's such a positive, he's, and he's true, and he's honest. And you, I mean, you're friends with him. He's like, right. he's, he's, he's like Chris Lofton. Right. He's like <laughs> one of the greatest guys. One of the greatest guys in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I wish just, I had a brother who's like, so he could speak about me like Joe just spoke about <laughs> I speak about you, you kind of like do. That. <laughs> that is true. That I is speak true. about you like that. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Um, does, is he in Chicago with you when, when you're, uh, shooting book four or no? He, uh, does come to Chicago nice. kind of, and, um, uh, he, you know, goes, gets put into the bubble and goes through the quarantine and everything right. like that. And so then, then he, it, he does all of that just to spend enough time with me on set to see where I am. Um, I had, uh, the luxury of being a producer on the show nice. last season, Love which, that. uh, which I think could have been a vanity title, but it's a title that I took very seriously right. and I invested in the, the correlative storytelling and the arcs and stuff like that. Also knowing my place, 
Um, give the director that room. Understand that it's not right. your place to ever talk to the actors. Understanding what the protocol is. Right. Asking questions to the line producer of why this scene is going here or what they have, uh, what's tonally, what is uh, what they want for the scene or the director or the actor and what's yeah. done in that way as an education, you know what right. I mean? And trying to get my own masters um, uh, in that. And just really lucky and I, I really loved the... Um, the uh, ensemble feeling of that more than any kind of um, power or anything like right. that. But it's also something that I have been a lead on this show, in this series, for, for nine years. Yep. And it's something that I was like, this is what I want. You got to kind of go, kind of got to go after what you want. Of course. Um, I also want to know if you want to direct one day. But uh, if, uh, like, what is the difference? Because obviously, when I go back and I watch episode one of Power, it's vastly different than what book four is or what, you know, uh-huh, Ghost is or uh-huh. what Raising Cain is. They're, they all have their own identity. Uh, especially because yours is the only show that's shot not in New, New York, York City. Yep. So I want to know, like, because it's tonally it's a little different. How, is it feel different being on set? Or, like, what are the differences from day one of Power and then day one of, you know, book four? Wow. Uh, that's a really deep and great question. I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious as, like, a fan of the show. Is it colder? Oh, yeah. Uh, in Chicago, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. I in should Chicago. never do that. <laughs> my, my wife, who's from here, literally when I first took her to Chicago, um, she turned to me at one point and she dead ass said, why do people live here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said that to him in New York. I'm like, <laughs> negative 30. It was yeah. like negative 30 when yeah. in Chicago. So, yeah, we had this. Um, That's bad coldness. We had one scene last in the f- uh, pilot episode of book four and I uh, it was negative 30. 30 wind chill. And uh, I was just like, yo, this is, and I'm dressed like this. Right, right, right. But I just got the Tommy haircut. And I'm like, this is actually dangerous. <laughs> like, yeah. th- we can't, mm-hmm. this, we can't, we can't do this. Yeah. this he, was, he was talking about the night where they, where they uh, uh, killed uh, Kanan's character. Yeah, where we killed Kanan, we was, uh, I think it was in Far Rock. It was like sleet, oh, like God. raining, snowing, <sighs> breeze yeah. and wind. And, and you're right off. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the water, so. Yeah, right by the water, but yeah. it was freeze. 50 got so sick after that day. Yeah, after, I remember that because he was after, throwing up. Mm-hmm, after we finished that scene, 50 was sick as hell. Yeah, I, I was just basically in the car the whole time. He was out doing action, all type of shit, so he was yeah. going through it. Bro. Yeah, for, and actually, even in the first season, we had some, when I uh, kill, when Tommy kills uh, mm-hmm. uh Vibora. Don't incriminate yourself now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 He's got my back. I gotta give him credit. Come on, come on. <laughs> but th- truly, when uh, when that happened, it was another one of those super, super cold days. We had another, I'm trying to think, there was another one where I had 103 temperature, which is the highest temperature I've ever had in my life. And right. I still... David Noller, I love you. David Noller's di- directing, and I think it must have been season two or something when we had all had these motorcycles and we're doing this thing. I was just like, uh, he's just like, you can stay in the trailer. We'll use your like stunt double for most of it, but I just need the, you for those close ups. Mm-hmm. Then of course I, you know, sound, sounded. Uh, I had such a deep voice during the whole thing. I sounded like Isaac Hayes that <laughs> I had to do the ADR, ADR over, to, yeah. to redo it. But yeah, yeah man. Dealing with some weather. Yeah. But I love that in book four that we played the weather for the weather. Right. We don't yes. try to hide nothing. Yes. Right. Which which we, we have to do in ghosts yeah, a little we'd bit. Be in, it'd be like what? It'd be like July, bro. It'd be like yeah. June, July. We'd be having to wear these big ass coats. Yeah, yeah. Coats we were both in Montclair. We were yeah. in that uh, the coffee shop. It was bro. so. Oh, yo, that day was hot, hot. as hell. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Listen, yeah. listen. I could never film in Chicago unless you know Book Four wants the boys there. Yeah. <laughs> it we... is the it is the universe. Right, right. Unless they want to cross over. And I can the tell boys you, can I can catch t- a flight real quick. Yeah. I can tell you one thing about season two. Tommy's running out of friends. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Oh, man. Oh, Yo, Rig, you and your boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love that. Be, see, this Catch is a what, flame. right. This is why I kind like. It's such a cool thing that we've done because there's really no other shows. Maybe The Walking Dead has done a couple spinoffs, which have not been as successful. Great show, but the other ones haven't been as successful. But besides, like the Marvel universe, like who else has done what CK and Fifty and what you guys have done? Nobody. So I, I would love to see more of that crossover. Obviously, Kanan's a little tough because it's back in the day. Mm-hmm. But I would love to see. I wonder like, if they'll ever get to the Tommy and Ghost characters and yes, Kanan. In, in Sasha's episode, he said he said that it was six years prior, and it's funny because I am actually really good friends with the with the kid who played um, young Tommy. Oh yeah, his name's Ethan. Oh, he, Ethan. Oh yeah, because I know him from. Shameless. He's right. fantastic. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm just really good friends with him. So uh, 
he's like, oh, I haven't heard anything. And, and I'm hoping at some point, because I'm curious as a fan of the show, I'm curious to see. That's a, that is just that's honestly just only a good idea. Like, right. Like, there's right. only W's coming from that. If they do that, mm -hmm. that's, that's right. a big W. I get what Sasha's That'll trying to do. He's trying to solidify the show in its own world first. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would love to see that. And I would love to see a little bit more of the of the crossovers, which potentially we might get coming up. So I'm I'm excited to do that. But there's so much to do in this universe, which I love. Um, much like if they do like the Influence Lorenz show, they're also maybe mm -hmm. talking about doing one in London. Like there's so much crossover that could happen that I think creatively is, is fun for me to think about of like, oh, wait, so you you ended up here and now it's six months later and they're here in this show. Like it's just something cool. Well, whole th even with the Walter Flynn thing right. on book four, I was like, you could do, you know, the Northern Irish type thing, you know, even though he's he's. Scottish of Irish descent, which Tommy Flanagan is in real life, but you could do something like that. You could have bring that over. I would, man, I'd be super yeah. down for that. He'd be in Stars, maybe. maybe. Hey, tell me about Tommy Flanagan, please. Is he? The, he's the best from Sons of Anarchy. I'm a massive fan. Yeah, like, he's mad. did you ever watch that show? I, I did, but I it wasn't like my show. I right. check in here and there. I just been a fan of Tommy Flanagan Unreal from actor. like you know got. Brave heart on. Like right. he, anytime he popped up in something, he was just super present in yeah, there. He's bigger man. than life. He's uh, a guy. I always said, Tommy, I love, I love that I never know what's going to come out of your mouth because <laughs> I don't think you know what's going to come out. <laughs> <of your mouth. laughs> he just be. He just. just oh, he's just. He, whatever. Whatever. Whatever the mood takes him. Wherever the mood takes him, Tommy answers the call of the spirit within. <laughs> he's a fantastic actor and and a, a really f wonderful human being. Right. Um, so, it, but kind of back to what we were talking about before, we kind of went off on a tangent, but did, did it feel, um, like, cause I know Michael feels this way. Did it feel being, uh, different number one on the call sheet? Like you're the quarterback, you're a producer. Did it feel being different, um, on book four than it was, uh, on power originally? Like, cause I know you and you know, Omari kind of like were both the leads of the show, but was it a different feeling being like, this is the Tommy show. This is Joe show. Like I, I, it was a little bit different, right? But I feel like just because I've been in the industry for so long, I've seen people who are in that position do really good things, and I've seen people do really crummy things. Right. And I was just like, I can, I can do this by being a nice guy a and person. having the, you know, the no asshole policy, right. which we've really kept. That and it just it does trickle down because it allows people to feel safe and. Um, we have a wonderful line producer as well, Rich, Richard Letterer. He is fantastic, and he's always about, it's never about getting rid of that person. It's it's bringing to their knowledge right. what the situation is, and can we, keeping fix you it. on the team, and can we fix it? Right. I've always loved that you, sh that you shout out The Crew, because that's literally the name of our show. I know. Has, has it, but I, I love that you do that, because that's the way that me and Michael are. Like, we go to set every morning, like, why go to set? And, and be an asshole when we get to do this for a living. Like, we go to set with smiles on our faces. We're playing music. Good morning, everyone. And I, I've money, always no heard mornings. great things get that you've always and, done that. Get money, no good mornings. Get money, yeah. You're, Michael's right on that. GM but, says we get money, no good mornings on our <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good morning, let's some money But yeah, first. I've always heard, heard that about you. So And Michael's the same way. Like, Michael tries to make everyone, you know, have a great day. And I love that about him because that's who he is. He's a fucking great kid. So I'm curious if it, if it felt any different from, from Power to... Yeah, it does. It did. And we we hold people to a standard of just being cool. And uh, you know, there's always there's always little bitty shakeups, but only small. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things that is overlooked sometimes is really if this is another 50 cent thing. Like right. people I was lied to once, many, many times, but once specifically <laughs> that I that I remember is get that in the, get in you have to it. be loved or feared. And it's better to be feared than loved. And I know that that's Bronx Tale, but it was like it's it was to told to me by somebody else that it that it's better. And it's not because then I see that fifty is actually so loved that people are afraid to let him down. Exactly. And that's the kind of the 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 real. That's the real thing. And I want it to be like you don't want to be loved, but I wanted to make people feel safe enough to feel creative and empowered mm -hmm. and to bring people up with me. And so any time to make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, like that, to yeah. let them not be afraid to make mistakes. I always wanted people to feel comfortable enough on the set as guest stars to be mm -hmm. like, right. yo, this, Do hey, it. man, you're welcome here. You are here for a reason. Right. And, and I think that that's when people see that and it's, that's trickled down. That's, Even to background. 
Oh, even man. Even in the background. Sure. Because mm-hmm. I did that, and mm-hmm. I know how terrible that can be. So, yeah, that's it, it, it's tough. You know, you, you want people. I think maybe it stems from maybe that day. Maybe that day backstage when that guy said that to you, maybe it stems from that. You're like, I don't ever want someone yeah. to feel like I felt that day. Oh, yeah. That is because we're all making this thing together. Why not Why not make it great? I never understood the the competition aspect. Like, as an athlete, I, I get it, but I never understood, like, we're all on the same team. Mm-hmm. We're trying to make this great thing for these people that they love so much. Like, these people, the fans pour their heart into this. So I never understood, like, the competition. Like, oh, he's got that, he's got that. I'm like, nah, I'm just going to show up and I love what I do. If I make some money, sure. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the way that I see it, and I've always heard that about you, which which is uh, which is yeah, great. Yeah, we have a really wonderful, wonderful cast. Um, Manuel Ramirez, uh, Manny Ramirez, uh, is just fantastic. Who joins the the show this season? And uh, Carmela Zambado is fantastic. Nice. Uh, we, we, these I'm are the, new directors or no? Producers? These are new. These are new actors. Oh, actors. In oh, the great. Show. Uh, oh, I, I remember seeing that deadline article actually. If, if, yeah, yeah, we they just we have just really kind of pumped up our nice. Just the actors are just so they're having such a great time. Right, that's always the best. That's why you make the best, the best work. I mean, yeah, right. yeah. Just having fun, having fun on set. The best work you change at least. Hundred percent. Right. Chris Tardio joins the show this season, and Chris Tardio it was the Tommy role was down to me and Chris Tardio back in the day. Back in the day. Wow. Full and now we have Chris Tardio on on uh, on the show as well in a really interesting role. Who's wow, and that's it's fire. yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. That's crazy. It's really it's it's and who knows where it's gonna go, you know? But it's there is a. Uh, because we're on opposite ends, we're on, we're on different teams, me and Chris. Mm. But he's a, just a wonderful guy, and I actually met him at that audition, and we have remained friends. Right. There's some. There's another kid in the industry that I have that with as well. Um, yeah. But it, it is an interesting thing because it's not really up to you. It's up to the producers. Yeah. You both go in and do your thing. You've lived that life. Who's going to do what So you do. it's up to them, and it's no, you know, whatever happens, happens. So. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. That you guys met at that audition, and you just we met at that audition. Right. But he's a New Yorker. And we had a lot of friends in common, and then we just kind of kept hanging out. Right, and that's fire. That, that kind of so when I I did a movie Ma like three four years ago, and the kid that I tested against, um, weirdly enough, I went to go to the writers' room of Ghost season one, and um, I saw him walking by on the on the lot. Sunset, I think it was Sunset Gower at the time mm-hmm. in L.A. Mm-hmm. They're in a new lot now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we we went a couple weeks ago, but oh, they, yeah. they they uh, the kid walked by. And as I was coming out of the writer's room and they were just talking about how I'm going to have a brother, I went right back in. I was like, Bar-. I was like, oh, my God. I went right back in and I was like, he's got to be my brother. Like, he's shooting a show right there. Like, this would be great. It didn't work out with scheduling, but they reached out to his people and, and tried to get him on the show. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I tried to get him on, on as my brother, but he's killing it now. He's doing, like, a bunch of shows and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but a- ask the power questions that we ask everyone. I, you know the questions that fire, the fans need. This is a fire question, because everyone has, like, such cool answers to it. So we, we always ask everybody that comes, comes by, if you weren't Tommy... Who would, like, what's your favorite character? Who would you rather, like, who would you choose to portray? What character? In the original. In the original. Actually, and then let's do, let's do the other shows, too. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. Ghost. Yeah. Ghost, right? Yeah. 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 No. If I wasn't Tommy, I'd like to be Ghost. And I believe that 50 originally had that as as Ghost was um, the white guy. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think, oh, I think CK did mention that. Maybe wasn't I on even, the show. I didn't even know that. And then yeah. Fifth was like, no, no, no. I'm going to change it. It's going to be the... The, the white guy's gonna be this other guy, and the black guy's gonna be. Both. That's exactly yeah. how he said it to me. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, we gonna switch. We gonna switch. We gonna switch. Yeah, you know, that's that's. I mean, obviously, Ghost. Like, that's probably just. It's just so fun playing that character, bro. There's so many different sides. Oh, of he's Ghost, such. Bro. So many. Even when sides. I rewatch it, and and obviously I love oh. But what a rotten character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It would yeah, be fun yeah. to just indulge in his yeah, rot. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, he gets and his every, self-centered, narcissistic, goes fun to be bad. mystical. It's fun to be bad. Right. Yeah, right. Super fun to That's be That's why, bad. like, you do have some, you are the hero in your, you know, in the show and in the world. Mm-hmm. But if you were like someone on the outside, you're like, that guy is evil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's just, that's that's the most, as an actor, like there's nothing more rewarding than that. There's nothing more. Fun as opposed to like, say for example, like Trace, who technically is the good guy. Mm-hmm. Who's, but he's just an asshole. Who's, yeah, who's calling, <laughs> who's like testifying and all he's this just stuff. An asshole. This is the upstanding citizen, but the fans hate him. Yeah, no, no. Because he's, a, he's a bad guy. Right, he's the villain. It's, he's the bad guy. It's so weird how- Shut t- the fuck up, Trace. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bro, Trace, man. That fucking Trace, bro. He, he gonna start some problems, bro. Yeah. 
who, who would you want to be on your show if you weren't, um, if obviously you weren't Tommy? Is there another character you're like, oh, that'd be fun there? I think, it's, I mean, it's got to be, and that's not just because he's my boy. But it would have to be Jannard. I knew he was going to say Jannard, yeah. bro. I knew yeah. it. And Chris does a great job. I would pick Jannard, too, honestly. Yeah. He's just out of control. And he's so... <laughs> he's so... I, I love Chris, I, Yeah, bro. I love Chris, I love too. Chris, and about, I love Chris's Jannard because he's, he's so like, I should have got mine. I should have got mine. I feel like he ran with that thing, and it really worked for him that mm. he didn't get his. Like, you know, right. he still owed something. Right. Mm-hmm. The world still owes me. And I don't think that, I think, because I think that there's uh, there's going to be that, and then who knows if he ever gets over that and gets becomes a little more self-actualized, that he will be, he'll be this new thing. I'm just excited for the journey of that character, yeah. for sure. I see a lot of Tommy in that character. Um, did you guys ever hear the expression that a man lives two lives? And the, yeah. se- and the second one starts when he realizes there is only one. Oh, that's interesting. Holy shit. So uh, wh- how do you relate Yo, that, that to to what's what's going on with Jannard's character? Well, he's kind of just like, like you know, oh, like, I'll get there when. I'll get right. there if. If this happens, then this. So we got to do this. It's just kind of like, you're in it now. This is all you get. Right. Mm-hmm. You only get one drop. What right. is that? I, I mean, it's just he only get, you only get one shot. It kind of reminds me when... when um, when I think it was when Holly died, and and the time Man. Tommy was just like, whatever, Cat whatever time, happens yeah. happens. If I like, that's, that's the most serious. dangerous person. Yeah, and get, gets beat up, beats up by all the uh, right the, the, the Serbs. Serbs. Yeah. yeah, that shit was crazy, yeah. bro. But it's, like he said though. Tommy's loyal, man. Yeah. She's tried to take Ghost out. She sent him yeah. a hit without Tommy knowing. Tommy was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, that was one where I went back and watched the uh, John Malkovich and. Um, uh, uh, the of mice and men, you know, when because so, the because the um, you know, his character kills the girl, but doesn't right. You know, he's like, yeah, it's just it's like, and then it's like, oh, wake up. That's why he was like, that was the yeah. fun and and really tough improv thing. I when I and I love that they kept that in when I said, why are you doing this to me? Right. Mm. God, that's, that's a right. crazy question. That yeah. Yeah. She's dead. Why are you doing this to me? What, what was your yeah. favorite scene that you shot in that scene? That scene? That had to it was the hardest day of so work. It was, and and Lucy Walters, who I you love know her. love, so I good. love her. We so need her much. on, please, Lucy. We'd love to have if you on. Watching this. Oh, she's Pull up. she's she's amazing. She's a she's just dynamite. One of my favorite scene partners of my life. Yeah, she was only supposed she's to do fire. a couple episodes, right? And they loved her so much they mm-hmm. kept her in. She's yeah. fine. She was yeah. fine. She was fine. Yeah, yeah, you guys worked so well together. I think she's real close with Courtney still. So I mean. It's, uh, I know that Courtney loved her, and, and I get it. Why? Because uh, Lucy's dynamite. She was just dope, no, she was fantastic. Dope. Right. She was and and she just... embraced being loved to hate. Right. Yeah. People love to hate yeah. that character. And she's like, yeah, well. When it's like that, you got to embrace it. Man. Mm-hmm. You heard it here first. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to embrace it. Yeah. You got to. It's... And turned it right on its head. Yeah, it is what it is, you know? Got to take everything that comes with it. It's being so, a, cr- it's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy what they did. Like the most hated Yo. character on television. Now everyone loves him. It's bro. the greatest mm-hmm. thing ever. I don't know how they did it. Bro. <laughs> I truly don't know how they did it, bro. It's Collaboration. Yeah. They wrote it down. You pulled it off. Yeah. Wickedness, bro. But we we did it though. Yeah. We did. I look at I look back all the time. It's like damn, this is crazy. They used to hate me. Yeah. <laughs> they used to hate the boy. Now no. they're waiting for us to come back. <laughs> so we'll, I want to get into the movie that you have coming out. Thank um, you. But yeah, I'm really I, excited. I'm just curious, who, who were your early inspirations growing up? Like, who, who were some actors that you grew up and you're like, oh, God, I love their work. This Michael is Shannon. So yeah. he, Michael Shannon was doing the play Killer Joe at the next theater, and I was taking acting classes in a suburb of Chicago called Evanston, uh-huh. um, which is not super far from where I grew up. I grew up in the city of Chicago on the far northwest side, uh, primarily in uh, Norwood Park. And, um, but, but to get there on public transportation, I had to take the, uh, oh, what they call now the blue line, but uh-huh. we call it the O'Hare Congress all the way downtown, transfer at Washington station, jump on what they call now the red line. We call the Howard line, take it all the way to Howard station, then get on another train to the suburban line, the Skokie, uh, I either take this, not the Skokie Swift. I would take the Evanston line and go off at Noise Avenue and then get to class. So anyway, it's this little thing here, blah, 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 blah. But the thing was, is I was taking acting classes there, and the the other theater was in the same complex in the building. So I saw the one I saw Killer Joe when I was fourteen. Right, it was a beautiful play by um, Tracy Letts that I actually did the West Coast premiere of. 
of the same role that I saw Michael Shannon play. The only difference was I was like 30-something, and Michael Shannon was 16 playing a 20-year-old. Wow. And it was one of the most magical things I'd ever seen, and I was just like, I, I was in acting class, so I already wanted to kind of do this stuff. Right. But I would just watch him on stage going, two things. I think I can do that. And that's the coolest thing I ever seen in my life. Right. To be sixteen, playing a twenty-year-old, that's that's. He was always tall. That's crazy. Though. That's <laughs> fire. It's to just yeah. carry that, like that twenty-year-old presence, rather than carrying a sixteen-year-old presence, like and keeping it on. And it was just on stage. You said, on right? stage, yeah. That's and it was fire. just it, uh, Mark Nelson was in that's it. Fire. Got uh, it. was just these, these, just these wonderful dynamic actors. So that play really changed my life in a lot of ways. Um, uh, that was a huge early influence for me. I also, like, I'm just trying to think, who was I blown away by? Is her name, It's is it Bernadette, who was um, on um, Good Times, who played Thelma? She was so beautiful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. was like, I just used to stare at the television and be like, wow, it would be so much fun to be in a scene with her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, like, something like that. I, but I watched a lot of television. I mm -hmm. just thought TV was really cool when right. I was a kid. It wasn't so much, I mean, I loved movies, but I loved television, and the reason that I... Uh, wanted to get into acting is when I was 10 years old, uh, there was a show called Kids Incorporated. Um, I've that, heard of that. Who, who was the lead of that? Was, uh, Fergie was in it. Uh -huh. um, like, I can't even remember. There's like a, tons of kids. But what they did was is they played in like a rock band and then they acted out scenes. Cool. So I was like, who wouldn't want to do that? Right. Ma, right. I want to be an actor. She's like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, honey, come yeah. back in a month if you still want to be an actor. A month yeah. later, I said, Ma, I want to be an actor. So she opened up the Yellow Pages, you know, and flipped through the Yellow Pages, acting, nothing, went to theater, did some auditions and you know the rest is history. It was right. just kind of mama love. Yeah. Oh my god. Shout my out to mama. My mom did a lot. Right. Did a lot. And is she just thrilled? Did she love the show? Did she like? My parents were really worried about me taking on acting as a career. They're um, right. uh, you know, hardworking Polish Americans who were just like you know, do you kind of. They always thought I'd do something with my hand. I'm not quite as intelligent as my other two brothers, okay. although I'm not. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> um, but I, I think that they always thought I'd be, a, you know, a policeman or a fireman. My neighborhood was uh, very municipal directed. Right. Of there was a lot of city workers, cops and firemen, city workers. So they probably figured I'd go into that, and I had kind of every intention of doing that. But like this thing, um, I just couldn't stop. Uh, I when I give uh, t talks to my old uh, college, Columbia College, Chicago, uh, shout out CCC. <laughs> um, I, I always say, when they say, well, we, what should I do for an actor? What should I do to be an actor? I said, if there's anything else you want to do, anything else, you should do that. I say that as well. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's a tough life. And to think about, I think about it like this. I I didn't have two nickels to rub together till I was 38 years old. Right. 37, 38 years old. I lived my life um, and at the poverty line or or below for you know right. most of my adult li life. Grew up wonderfully uh, lower middle class. I didn't want for anything. Um, I was uh, very admirable uh, growing up. But um, I you know just to be able to have m my money as an adult took me all the way into my late thirties with with minor successes along the way right. and, and tons of near misses. I mean the roles I was up for, it's a uh, it's 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 a long list. Yeah. But you know, didn't get them. But it's it's a tough life. It's a tough career. You have to have thick skin. Right. Yes. And they you only have to have they only skin. see this. Have to. Because like what guys who are guests who are, you know, career guest stars are going on these types of shows. So this is the stuff that gets elevated where they don't know the Joseph Sikora that put in the work for 20 years before he got power. Yeah, yeah. They don't know the Joseph Sikora that was, you know, Law and Order, uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy, CSI. They don't know that. Facts. So yeah. they only see kind of you know Joe Sakura on the you know on the red carpet you know Michael in his vlogs like yeah. they don't they don't see the stuff before. That's why you gotta stay patient, stay resilient. If that, that's great advice, Michael, keep yeah, going with that. Right. Yeah, stay patient, stay resilient. That's if you want. I mean, that's in anything in life. But if you want to be an actor in this entertainment business, you that's the main thing: right. patience and resilience, bro. Like, because if you don't have that, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. No doubt. Drive yourself crazy. There's anything else you can do, do it. Because I trust me, it's a long road. Like Ch Charlie Hunnam said this best. I listened to an interview on him. I think it was the Nerdist podcast. I'm a podcast head. I listen to, to it all. But he um, he said, if you want to be famous, go. You make a TikTok, make a sex tape, do whatever it is you want to do to be famous. If you want to be an actor, it's the hardest way to become famous. No and lie, it's bro. stuck with me because he no he ain't wrong. You know, wanting to be famous isn't going to get you through the um, 
the being told no, you know, your car being repossessed, you, you living in an apartment, you're starving, you can't eat, like, the want for fame isn't going to get you to those, the, the want to tell story and the love acting, that's what's going to get you. And you guys even have it a little bit harder than me in terms of your generation that everybody wants to believe, they have to believe that you're actually that guy. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't get to get away with like, I'm an actor. I can do, I do this because I'm an actor. Right. Mm -hmm. And truly believing it, you're, you have an extra layer of burden saying like, oh, if I'm, a rat on TV. If mm -hmm. I'm this guy on TV, I'm perceived as having to be right. that. Yes. And that's unfair. It right. sucks. I know people, people, Shane talked about that. People like fucking people go up to Shane in the street. Oh, yeah. like, you motherfucker. He's like, I'm, I'm just, uh, just, just doing my job, man. Right. Just doing my job. Really, At this really point, well. when they ask me, they'd be like, yo, why'd you kill your father? I'd be like, they made me do it. <laughs> right. They made me do it. I don't, right. even, I don't even explain it. Ask Courtney Camp. <laughs> yeah, ask Courtney. Ask Courtney. Yeah. They made me do it. I ain't ask him to, I ain't ask him to make me do that. <laughs> Does that happen to you a lot where people want you to just be Tommy? I can imagine because you're an icon. Yeah, in, in this. yeah you know, and there's the, I always, part of Tommy was always based on guys that I was afraid of growing right. up. Uh, it, it's, it's not me. It's like, you know, listen, man, I still wouldn't want to be the guy who touches my wife, but right. it, it's, it's still, you know, there's, there's a, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not selling copious amounts of drugs and, <laughs> And uh, taking stuff out, like of course it's there. There's, uh, there's you bring part of yourself to every of character, course, like yes. you said earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to have that reality, that based in reality, but you also accept the fact that this is not, not you. This is not you. And to play Frank Jr. on Ozark and to play Fire. Tommy. Fire. Is, is I mean, they're, they are the exact opposite character, and I have to give love to Jason Bateman because I came in there after the audition for the character thinking I, d I got the role, right. so I'm going to play it like this, and Bateman being like, uh, Joe, you know what? Even more like, uh, <laughs> yeah. he's not even there. Like, even worse. Like, this guy's even more of a loser than you want to be. Yeah, cool. He's that show was so director. fire because I was just watching Ozark, just watching it, and then it was season three when you, when you, when yep, you yep. came in, and I was waiting for season three for Mad Long. I was watching and watching. I saw you, and I'm like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, wait, that's Uncle Joe. <laughs> I was like, nah, this is fire. I was like, nah, this is tough. Especially just being, like, being that, like, I didn't even know you were going to be on it. Like, I never, I, like, it was no talks about it. We never spoke about it. I just literally was just watching the show that I just was enjoying and watching, and then I was just like, wait, hold on, Uncle Joe is in this joint. This is fire. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah, that was fire. I, I loved it, and shout out to Chris Mundy, the showrunner of that. Who's the show's fire. He's one of the most incredible writers. He's the nicest guy. There's no duplicity. He doesn't play any games. Right. He right. doesn't. He's not precious with this. He's so forthcoming. Jason Bateman, um, a wonderful director, obviously great actor, but wonderful director who I was just so grateful that I had the... the, the I'm coming off of being Tommy from Power, and in a certain aspect, people are puffing you up. You're this is man, wow, how amazing you're doing, and this and that. And then I get to Ozark, where listen, there's a lot yeah, of content understand. out there. Nobody knew who the hell I was. I mean, nobody knew nobody from right. casting to every nobody. I mean, some of the teamsters and a couple of the crew right. people. <laughs> Power is like a their, specific world. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Massive, it's it's but insane. But it's a specific world, which right. I which I love. Like, I do love it too. Right. It's it's like all the little fan club. Right. <laughs> so, so the Ozark people are just like you know, like, what's up? <laughs> who cares? And 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 I'm right. and I'm playing you know a recurring guest star. Like this is their house. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was kind of like no, I had, you know part of my brain was going no, I audition for this and I think these my roles and I'm good at you know I do my thing, and I'm like or I can listen to the guy who made this show right. mm -hmm. and who made a hit show and maybe I can learn something. Right. And I'm happy that that part of my ego is still strong enough to be wise enough to be like, right. let me see how much I can stretch this Fire. instrument in a different direction. Right. Michael always brings up this quote that 50 told him, which I want him to say it again because it's one of the greatest quotes ever. Don't ever feel too entitled to where you deprive yourself. Mm. Love that quote. Don't ever feel too entitled to something to where you deprive yourself of other blessings, bro. Right. I love that quote. I live by that quote. 50 told me that we were filming season yeah, season three, I believe. We was in Red Hook. This is when Kanan and Enrique was just first hanging out, talking about Breeze and those scenes where we were just walking through Red Hook. And we was in this trailer, and they literally called us to set. And this was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes after they called us to set. <laughs> and we just literally just still talking. Like we just was chopping it up in this trailer for mad long. And that one quote, that one that one sentence he, he, he said to me, that stuck with me forever, bro. Like, God, I live by that. Live by it. Kind it's great. By it. Another quote that you love too of fifties that I always think about, always think about, is that uh the they uh you can't cash an award in at the bank. Oh yeah, facts. We were talking about like awards and everything. I'm like, yo, five, it's like, bro, like they 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 are not seeing us, like I don't know what's going on. It's like, listen, we know we do great stuff. Right. 
And at the end of the day, you can't bring these these awards to the bank. You can't bring a trophy to the bank. So it's <laughs> like, it's whatever. Line. So I'm like, when I read that, I'm like, yo, you really right. You can't cash out no damn, <laughs> right. you can't cash out no little awards. So it's like, it's whatever, man. Like, we do it we do it for, for, for the love as well, but it's just like. Right. It is what it is. I received yeah. one award, man, and I don't ever need another one. I received the Iconic Actor Award from the Rainbow Push Coalition last year. Fine. Wow, that's Iconic. awesome. I was Iconic. so, I was so, Iconic. my parents were part of Operation Breadbasket in 1968 uh -huh. and marched with Dr. King and Reverend Jackson. Wow. wow. And uh, were, were part of Operation Breadbasket, which became Operation Push and which became the Rainbow Push Coalition. And uh, to have fire. my parents see that award being given to me, here's something that uh, may be controversial, but I'll say it and we got it for the show that's kind of interesting is that when people um, compare the Tommy character, especially to Eminem, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which is an honor. I mean, mm -hmm. I take that. It's a big honor. Have you met him? Never. <sighs> But plus, he's from Detroit. You know, we're Lake people. People say Midwestern. Right. It's it's not an accurate description. Right. Because I have more in common with somebody from Detroit or Cleveland or Buffalo, New York, uh, than I would ever have with somebody like downstate, you know, Illinois, which is fine, or Iowa right, or right, Nebraska. Right. It's like uh, that's Midwestern to me. Anyway, mm -hmm. long story short is that Eminem and all these uh, wonderful people who have been accepted by the culture. Mm -hmm. Tommy, like, and this is also a 50 cent quote, is Tommy was, is different from that in, in this one way, is that Tommy was created by the culture. Right. It's not an wow. acceptance, it's a creation. Right. So there is this ownership of the Tommy character of black and brown people. Right. That is, that is it's, it's unique. Right. That is a fact. My brother always said, you can't quantify unique. Sometimes people incorrectly say, that's very unique or kind of unique. It's actually, it's either one of a kind or it's not. Right. That God, actually does so make sense, though. Yeah. Because if it's unique, it can't, like, something can't be more unique than the other. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It you can, can never, just... you, you technically, you can't quantify unique. It right. can't be more or less than one of a kind. It's either unique or it's not. Wow, I never thought of it like it that. It actually the does culture, make sense, though. The culture really did create, the, like, obviously, yeah, like, you had a part in it, and, and Courtney had a part in it, but the people are really... 50 like, had a part in it, and right. O had a part in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Michael had a part in it. Right. Everybody, we kind of created, the, our, us season oneers, we mm -hmm. kind of, we, we all were part of creating that world. Right. But it was the culture that, that created the juggernaut that is yeah. mm -hmm. power. power. Yeah. People don't believe that we we actually had a scene in season six. That was the first oh, yeah, day I met for you. for sure, in your dorm room. Right, yes. but it never made it. I wish they put oh, that. Oh, didn't make it in? No, no they, they never, never made it. In. We've never met each other in the universe. Isn't that crazy? Yes, because I so vividly remember the scene. Right. That's Pe a funny-ass scene. People <laughs> think that, because uh, uh, I thought so, too, you know, but it, we have never met technically in power terms. Ah, but yet. they've seen. Yet. 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 Yeah, it's only three hours away in reality. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Tom is only three hours away from the boys. Yeah. Oh man, it's, 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 it's only like an hour and forty minutes in the air. Yeah. It is, it is, it is. Yeah. I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was like two or three hours. No man, I, we drive this. My wife, if my wife is driving, it's eleven hours uh, yeah. in the car. It's oh, nine if it's in the blue Mustang. So. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> man, that blue Mustang yeah. is so fire, bro. God, yeah, it's iconic. I so, see him out there sitting on the Mustang waiting for Uncle Tom. That's to one of my favorite scenes. Oh, me too. That's Ooh. one of my favorite scenes. Many men. Many men <laughs> comes on. Nah, that scene, bro. When they put that on, I was watching. I'm like, nah, this is crazy. This is different. And and Michael gets the credit for. There was a line. It was a different line that was in there. Mm -hmm. When I when I when I when he says something, and then uh, it was a different line. I said, "What would I, what would I, what would I say?" You, you say, I, "I want the smoke. I want yeah, the smoke." Yeah, I want all the smoke. The, I, the, I, the original line was "Go for broke." Yeah. And then you and and, and then you and I I, 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 I asked Michael. I said, "Michael, that that ain't right." I said, "What would I, what would I say?" You know, like and Michael said, "No, man, you say you'd say I want the smoke. I want I want that smoke." And I was like, "Then I said I, I want oh, all, all the smoke." smoke. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh, that's so, not me, right. so literally me and Michael collaborated on that yeah. line which became Had really kind of yeah, we, we literally said in the Mustang, we was talking about it. It was like, I was like, say? "I wouldn't say that, right?" Like, You're like, nah. like, "Nah, nah, he wouldn't say, <laughs> wouldn't say that." <laughs> He's like, so what would you say?" I'm like, "I mean, I need he wants to smoke. Right. And he was like, nah, I want all the smoke. That's fire. That yeah, people don't know so that sometimes fire. that's how that happens. Yeah, bro. Right. That scene was fire, right. bro. I love that scene. Yeah. Oh, that man. was great. That yeah. And to fire. get many men, what a gift. What? Right. I'm it. telling you, like, for that to be a background song in one of our scenes, is just, that's just legendary, yeah. bro. You dripped out. Yeah. Dripped out. Got the yeah. good fit. 
blue Mustang behind me looking all nice. <laughs> Iconic. Fire. Iconic. Fire. So, so this new movie that, that's coming out, when is Fear. it coming out? And I want to yes, hear what's all the name? What's, like, what's everything? What okay, let me tell you. January 27th it comes out. Fire. And it's starring it's me birthday. and T.I. Here's another thing, just in terms of like me and Michael collaborating and making that up. So in the Fear movie that comes out January 27th, and I couldn't be more proud of. <laughs> yeah. So Ido Goldberg, to be he's such a great actor, he had an idea for the, for the script. So, um, you know, because we're all trying to avoid our imminent, demi uh, uh, imminent demise right. in the film like you want to do in a horror film. Mm -hmm. Ido had this idea. The director ran with it and then changed the entire script because this one actor's idea. And it, this is actually his idea about how people die, which you'll see in the film. Right. It all came from an actor, Ido Goldberg, and changed the entire film. Wow, and had all reshoots and everything, and changed Gotta the whole. This thing was wow, one thing, it. and it was one idea that changed the whole film. That's so crazy. So the, the success of this film could have been because they, we, because of great casting. Right, I love when when it's collaborative like that, and they're like, "No, th this is my thing." Like, that's so, I love that. Directed by Dion Taylor, and Dion Taylor directed a ton of great films. Uh, he directed um, uh, Fatal nice. uh, with, with uh, Michael Ely and Hilary mm -hmm. Swank. He, in The Intruder is where I met him. I did that with Megan Good, yep. um, uh, Michael Ely, and Dennis Quaid. <laughs> And then Dion has a... Uh, oh, you're a girlfriend. Chill out, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. She is just, she's, yeah, she's, 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 she's elite, bro. She's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen yeah. in, in, in my life, for yeah. sure. And also, beautiful heart. Wonderful human being. Um, and a friend of 50. Yeah. Uh, yeah come, come to the park. Yeah, come, come through. Come yeah, yeah, please. Come come on. On. Chop it up with the boys. <laughs> yeah, please, come on. I'm wearing double Baccarat that day. <laughs> He's like, please, come yeah. on. But so Dion directed uh, the finale of... Uh, Season one of book four and uh, the finale of um, season two of book wow, four. Wow, that's cool. Fire. That's fine. That's awesome. Who, 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 I'm curious. To, side note, who's one of your favorite directors in power originally? Like, did you have a director where you just like gelled with? Anthony Hemingway, yeah, I Anthony, mean, right, was the yeah. first one, but also Gary Lennon. So right. Gary Lennon directed a amazing number director. of episodes and he's an amazing director. What he did on season five, episode nine is where uh, I kill my father. Right. So Teresi goes the way to Dodo. That damn ghost, man. That ghost, man. <laughs> that's true. You're right. Not a lie from ghost. Ghost. <laughs> and Gary had us do this thing. He goes, do this scene again. And he started this just as an idea. Of his. Mm -hmm. Do it with no lines. Make it through all the beats of the whole scene. The whole scene. Right. The death scene. Going to the hospital with him before I kill him when he wants to say goodbye to his ailing wife. Right. All that stuff. He's like, now do it with no lines. And he meshed those up and did there's a lot of those that made the cut right without words wow balls yeah. that's actually insane yeah balls <laughs> what that's fucking awesome balls yeah, that's just fire. balls yeah. And, yeah, and, and he was just and, and, and trusting your actors mm -hmm. imagine a writer who's just like no you know what I'm trusting you a writer who's right. directing who's trusting his actors more than the writer, the writer on the right. page wow. Different. yeah that's awesome. Wow. He's taking a chance for it. Yeah. yeah. So is there a little log line of like what it's about or it, it, can you kind of not give that away yet? Oh, 100%. Or? So it's all about fear, truly being fear. So right now we're actually um, allowing the pandemic to exist. But it's into the future where, you know, we have the strain and then we had um, the coronavirus B and then we had Omicron and then right. we have the, another Omicron variant. Mm -hmm. And so we're putting this just into the future where we're just like, I'm fucking sick. I'm fucking sick of this shit. I'm mm. just fucking tired of it. But it how is like how fear, how fear as a collective, I said this quote, it's like it's kind of kind of jumps on the Carl Jungian theory of the collective unconscious. Right. Which in a in a nutshell is that we have these experiences as human beings and somewhere in the collective unconscious of the group of human beings, we have all of this knowledge of, of the years of together. It's just like, like how, how do, how do, how, why are all of these things popping up at the same time in history? Right. Uh, without communication, before the internet, before all that stuff. There's something in the collective unconscious in the world that we're picking up on as a species so there's this but like maybe one of those things is the fear and has this pandemic what has this pandemic done wow, is there yeah. is there an idea of fear and how does that fear manifest itself and are there ancient evils in the world that are able to be accessed or work their way into us and our 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 minds right and and then it it, it questions reality just like we question reality with the metaverse right mm -hmm. with uh social media with all of the with the information we get on the news and unfortunately that politics has been a game of just being able to say whatever you want and being able to get away with it, denying the truth. 
mm-hmm. not looking for the truth. And, and as actors, I think a lot of times as actors, uh, it gets passed over that we are truth seekers. Right. My job is not how this is going to be perceived as an audience, as just as an actor, not as with a producer hat on, but just as an actor. My job is to seek out the truth, period. A hundred percent. I love that. And your job is to see how the audience is going to take that right. or you, how you askew the truth. But right. my job is to be like, how would Tommy Egan be in real life if he was from here and this is the situation right. he's been put in? A lot of times people think that acting is, which I've said before, um, it's it's lying, it's it's faking, it's, it's not, and I, it's actually see, the complete opposite. opposite. Complete opposite of that it's what, shit. the truth of what's happening with the circumstances, what is happening between these two people. Um, if you, if you fe- are feeling an emotion and you try to show that, that to people, they're gonna laugh at you. Right. Because they'll be like, what the fuck are mm-hmm. you doing? Right. But if you're feeling that emotion, I always say sometimes with actors, they're going the wrong direction. This is the right direction. Right. You're go, go in here. Mm. You'll find the truth in here. Out here, you're gonna show people what you think they wanna see. You right. don't know what they wanna see. You can't be in you control of that. My wife always tells me, what people think about you is none of your business. It. Right. So can't that's just the same thing with acting. Don't try to show people what you think they want to see. Show them the truth, and right. then they'll 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 think they'll see whatever they want. Yeah, God, whatever I, they get I from me is what they get from me. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we That's could weird. literally have a five-hour episode with you, but please, we want you to come back <laughs> right. before um, book four comes out. Yes, we want you to come on recap before episodes fear, before fear too. Right, we would we would, come we back would for love fear. Well, this will come out. A, like a couple of weeks before before couple, Fear yeah, comes yeah, out, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe like a month. So go people, see Fear. It's gonna yeah, be a fantastic yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. Stars upon stars upon stars. It's Fine. great. It's fun. It's so great. Be in theaters right. and It'll be in theaters. Fine. Right. January twenty seventh, and then we'll also have it being streamed, and you can Netflix follow and everything. us. Incredible. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. stick it on there. Yes, yeah. sure. go go see Fear. But we definitely want to have you back. Like obviously, we're doing a huge long episode, but we just we want you back. We love you. Got to save some stuff. We got to keep some stuff in the bag. I'll do I'll do this one to camera. You better watch the crew has it. I'm gonna cancel Christmas. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Click that. Click that, Dave. Click that. <laughs> Dave over there is rubbing his hands. He's like, Dave's yes. Like, yes. Um, I, 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 Michael, I want you to close out the episode, but there is, I do want to say something like, um, everything that happened was just a snowball of of misinformation. Um I respect you so much as an actor, as an artist. I always have since day one that I met you um, and and we talked in that choke dorm mm-hmm. uh, hallway. Um, I just have nothing but admiration for you. When, when I watched uh, Power, because I hadn't seen any episodes beforehand because I didn't, you know, if Tommy came in, I would have reacted differently. I would have known too much. Right, right. So I wanted to live in reality of Brayden. Um, when I watched the show, I was like, this is one of the coolest characters. I love the way you played it. I respect your work so much. And um, I'm glad that we really, like, had a conversation. Because we never really, we had a conversation, but we didn't have, like, to know who each other were. And I'm glad that that happened. And I just, it's been great getting to know you these past couple months that people really haven't seen. You know, I've been doing the sly comments for fun, but me and Joe really, like, squashed it. And I kind of got to, like, know who he was and who I was. And it just really was, like, a miscommunication of anything. So um, I want to give you your flowers as someone who built yes. this. You know, you're one of the day one people who have built this universe. This podcast wouldn't exist without you. Um, and... Thank you for everything that you've done for this universe. I'm so. honored to be in the same universe as you, Gianni, and Michael, you already know. You know how it goes, baby. Yes, sir. Listen, man, y'all heard it here first, man. They squashed it. I, I already knew. I, I just was waiting for them to tell you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I already knew what was going on. I'm like, damn, not my uncle, not my bro. I'm like, what's up, bro? What are we doing? But y'all heard it here first. Everything good between them. And listen, man, we just had the legendary Joseph Shakura in the spot with the boys. It's Uncle Joe right here, man. Like... It's gonna be a dope. This is dope, bro. Okay. This is it. This is it right here, man. The crew has it, baby. The yes, crew sir. has it, and you have it, baby. Follow Mike Rainey Jr. Where's 22? Is not back yet? Nah, not yet. Soon come back. Soon come yeah. back. Soon come back. But, um, fa- no, first, we, you gotta plug everything first. Yeah. We plug our stuff for, yeah. So, fear, plug. January 27th. Go see Fear in theaters, and then we're gonna stream this thing. Follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter, Joseph Sakura Four, and uh, on Facebook. And man, nice. I tried TikTok. I just somebody somebody, <laughs> I'll so, help you. somebody already has Joseph Sakura Four on there. Really? And, yeah, and I'm just yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's see what they come. Go up crazy. With. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, he's like Fuck it. Do, do your thing. Yeah. But um, Michael Rainey Jr. on Instagram, where's Twenty Two on TikTok? Um, yeah, YouTube, where's Twenty Two? Go subscribe. More crazy vlogs coming. And yeah, the boys are here, baby. 
uh, Gianni V. Paolo, Instagram, um, TikTok. Also, special shout out. I know I shouted out um, a couple episodes ago, but um, a lot of these mass shootings that's happening, it's terrible. I hate it. Um, my dad, he has come up, he's trying to come up with this um, uh, platform to help um, you know, threat assessment and situations like this to stop these from happening. So Skypath Security, we're trying to get it in schools. Provided safety, baby. Right, everywhere around the world. We're trying to um, implement this. So um, check that out. If you know anyone that works in a school, please um, please reach out. So, Got to keep the young ones safe, man. They're the future. Yes. Thank you, Joe, for coming on. We appreciate yes, it. Man. We love you. Um, Uncle Joe, baby. My pleasure. Fear, Joe, baby. Ghost, and Book 4 coming soon, baby. Everything we're ready. Everything's going to be crazy, man. The universe <laughs> is going crazy, baby. The crew has it. Yes, sir.